discipline. To the word of the Lord we go tonight. First Chronicles, the 27th chapter. First Chronicles, the 27th chapter, verses 25 through 28. First Chronicles 27, 25 through 28. If you're there, shout, I'm ready for the word. And over the king's treasures was Asmaveth, the son of Adiel. And over the storehouses in the field, in the cities, and in the villages, and in the castles was Jehonathan, the son of Uzziah. And over them that did the work of the field for tillage of the ground was Ezri, the son of Chaleb. And over the vineyards was Shimei, the Raphamite. Over the increase of the vineyards for the wine cellars was Zibdi, Zabdi, the Shiphamite. And over the olive trees and the sycamore trees that were in the low plains was Bahelnan, the Gedarite. And over the cellars of the oil was Joash. And over the cellars of the oil was Joash. I want to talk to you tonight from this subject, the keepers of the oil. The keepers of the oil. Can you say that back? The keepers of the oil. Lord, thank you for your word that it is holy and blessed and effective in Jesus' name. The objective of this message tonight, it is to show us how God uses those who are humble for his glory. It goes without saying that we are living in a day and time where people clamor for the spotlight. People clamor for fanfare, people clamor for notoriety. Whether it be in positions of power in the church or in corporate America, on social media platforms for the likes, the desire to be seen for selfish gain, it is alarmingly high. And the grave danger that the Lord told me of this is those who desire to be seen by man will not be seen by God. Those who desire to be seen by man will not be seen by God. Now, we're past the interview process, Upper Room. You know I came with the word of the Lord tonight, so if you hear the truth, and when you hear the truth, say something back at me tonight. Jeremiah 9 and 23 says, Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. In this particular text that we just read, it is, a, it is a notable time in the history of Israel. It is a time of the transfer of power from David to his son Solomon. Solomon has been designated to be the next king. But David the Bible says that he is old and he is full of days and he knows that he will die soon. So from chapters 23 to 27, if you get a chance to go back and read it, we find in today's verbiage, David is appointing a cabinet for Solomon. He was placing people that he could trust in different positions of authority. He is placing the Levites in position. He's placing the priests, the minstrels, the porters, or the gatekeepers. 
He even made assignments for the treasures that were in the house of God. And in chapter 27 that we just read, he is making his last assignment of the military and civil officials. Look at it as if we are all tonight in a human resource department. And everyone is standing around waiting for their job descriptions. Everyone name is called and Joash, Mr. Joash, a Jew from Judah, has been assigned out of all places to the seller to be a keeper of the oil. I want to lift this up tonight because the oil has great importance. Would you say that back? The oil has great importance. According to Jewish society, it was, re it was used religiously. When there was a meat offering that was offered to the Lord in Leviticus 2 and 1, the oil had to be poured on it. It was used according to Exodus 27 and 20 as lamp fuel so that the lamp in the tabernacle could burn forever. It was used according to 1 Kings 5 and 11 as an item of commerce. It was used according to Luke and 23 as a cooking medicine. And according to Exodus 30, 20 through 25, it had to be made a certain way. Somebody shout it had to be made a certain way. And so this oil, it is of utmost importance. Oil, as we know it, it is a symbol. It represents the Holy Spirit. And I came tonight on this last night of the year before we go into 2019 to say that we need some saints of God who will be keepers of the oil in our day. I'm in no shape and, and form or fashion has or will the anointing of God ever lose its yoke destroying power. However, what we see is that it is sometimes stifled and the flow of the oil is hindered because of the keepers of the oil. Come on, let me talk to you tonight. The keepers of the oil, the Lord began to say to me, have become contaminated. The hearts and the hands that keep the oil are unclean. Glory to God. There is unrepented sin that is in the temple. And because, I see you looking at me like that. Because of the contamination of the oil, it cannot flow like it's supposed to. The keepers of the oil had become more charismatic. The keepers of the oil have become carnal. I heard the bishop say today that we have become sacrilegious. We are secular more than spiritual. The, we are relying now on sensationalism. We're relying on cliches. We're relying on seducing spirits from the devil versus the Holy Spirit of God. And then lastly, the cost of the oil has been cheapened. <laughs> yes, Lord, I'm going to preach tonight. The cost of the oil has been cheapened. Seemingly, there are people who don't want to suffer for the anointing. No one wants to go through for the anointing. We're always talking about coming out, and we are. But what about the times that God has ordained for us to be crushed? Ah, yes, Lord. So that the oil can flow. Seemingly the price of the oil now is on the clearance rack. The Lord said we're passing it out like we're passing out lottery tickets. Everyone is waiting for their number to be called. People are hungry for positions. 
the standard of holiness as we know it has been lowered. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody shout glory to God. I want to declare that the devil is a liar. And I want to declare to those who are as of Simon the sorcerer. I want to tell you that the oil cannot be bought. I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you uh, that, that the oil is not for bragging rights, doc. Uh, that, that's how preachers talk. I, I want to tell you tonight that the anointing is not for control and manipulation. But the anointing, the oil of God has been given to us for a purpose. Somebody shout it for a purpose. According to the word of God in Luke 4 and 18, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I want you to ask yourself a question and don't touch your neighbor. Ask yourself, put your hand on yourself and say, am I a consecrated keeper of the oil? We've got to ask ourselves that. Am I a consecrated keeper of the oil? Can God flow his power and anointing in my life and through my life for the demonstration of his glory? And look at your neighbor and talk to them only for one time tonight and ask them, are you a consecrated keeper of God's oil? We've got, get, we've got to get answers here. We've got to ask ourselves this and truthfully ask God to search us. Why? Because there's too much to be done in the kingdom of God. Come on, church. You're too quiet tonight. I said there's too much to be done in the kingdom of God for our hands and our spirits and our bodies and our minds not to be consecrated as keepers of the oil. I want to look at this tonight because Joash is assigned to the cellar. He is assigned an important job in an unimportant place. He is serving in a dark, damp, deserted cellar that runs underneath the city. It was unnoticed. It was uncomfortable. It was lonely, it was unappreciated, but he had one job and that was to keep the oil. The Lord sent me here tonight to talk to the Joashes in this church and I need to tell you this year that all of God's assignment won't, the assignments this year won't be pleasant. But you have one job, just keep the oil. Somebody in this generation, the Lord sent me as a prophetess of God and said, somebody in this generation, you've got to be willing to move to the cellar to keep the oil. Look at somebody and say, we've got to keep the oil. Uh, this, 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 this place in the cellar, it was, a, it was a thankless job. This place in the cellar, it is one, people of God, where your name may never be called. Your, your name may never be on the marquee. You may never, you may never be invited to the pulpit. You, you may never get a reserved parking space up front. You may not get recognized much for your labor. But God said the keepers of the oil, our job is essential in the church. He told me as I was studying and praying that this is the year of the underdog. This is the year of the no names. Hallelujah. This is the year of those who are not asking for the applause of man. But we are asking for the well done of God. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all sitting tight on me tonight. This is the year where people will say, you don't have to give me credit as long as God gets the glory. I'm comfortable being in the cellar with the nobody. Job 
to do. And I've got to keep the oil. Somebody shout glory to God. If you ask any bishop, any pastor, if you ask these men of God tonight, is there anything that I can do for you? The answer is yes. They need somebody to work in the cellar. Glory to God. I'm going to say that once more. What the bishop need, what your pastor, what your leader need, they need you to be comfortable working in the cellar. Because what scripture reveals is what happened in the cellar caused things to happen in the temple. There could be no light in the temple for the priest to minister. If if Joash was not assigned to the cellar, there could be no sacrifices on the altar. If somebody wasn't down in the cellar, people who are in the cellar get to church for prayer to prepare the oil because we have to have it flowing in our lives. Look at somebody and say, listen, are you willing to move to the cellar? Oh, come on, we need some people. We need some people who are not proud. Preach through me, Holy Ghost. We need some people who are not arrogant. We need some people who are not offended because your name wasn't called this year. Glory to God. We need some people who will stop clamoring for positions. My position is in the low place. Glory to God. You may not ever call my name. You may not put a title behind it. But as long as I'm keeping the oil, souls can be saved. Somebody throw your head back and shout glory. Joash, in order to move to the cellar, he had to be humble. He had to be trustworthy for David to give him this assignment. Joash had to stay in place. He couldn't get out of place and the Lord sent me to tell you that if you want to be in his will, then we must be willing to keep on doing the last, the the last thing the Lord told us to do until he tells us something else. Choash, one of his duties is that he had to watch for intruders. (laughs) He had to keep an eye out on the oil. He had to be sure that none of it was stolen. The Lord said we need watchers in our day. We need some people who are not woke as the world subscribes. But we need some people. I'm going to say that again. Let me rewind and say that again. We need some people who are not woke as the world subscribes. You're woke in black history. You're woke. You're woke on black on black crime. You're woke on the latest fad. But you are sleeping through one of the most crucial times. I wish somebody on this side would say something back to me. We are sleeping at one of the most crucial times of the body of Christ. The Lord said we need the position of the ancient watchman to be restored back in our churches. Choash, he had the duty to preserve the oil. History bears out the fact that this oil in the cellar, it was stored in large vats. That is something that is a huge container that had a lid on it. This vat would sometimes be sealed with a wax ring around the rim so that nothing harmful could gain access to the source of the oil. The men that worked with Joash had to make sure that there was no mold or mildew in the oil. We've got to make sure that what we are doing, we are preserving it. That thieves are not coming in and the spirit of complacency, the spirit, the spirit of, of jealousy, it is not mildewing what you have. See, you can have something, you can have a loaf of bread sitting on the kitchen counter, Sister Patricia. But just because it's bread don't mean it's fresh. Glory. 
I'm getting ready to get in trouble right here. Just, just because you have the microphone don't mean it's fresh, glory. Some of us been praying the same prayers for the last 15 years. We've been preaching the same sermons for the last 20 years. But when is the last time you search yourself and say, I want to make sure that I have a fresh word for a dying world. I want to make sure, come on, talk to me, somebody, that I have a fresh, a freshness about me that the oil has not been milled to. Somebody shout fresh oil, fresh oil. Come on, shout fresh oil, fresh oil. The Lord said that, listen, the reason why we can shout in this church, the reason why we feel the presence and the anointing of the Lord is because somewhere, somebody in the history of this church, there were men who lived out of sight. There were men whose names and women whose names you do not know, but they preserved the oil. They held on to the oil. Let me, let me just do a survey right quick and find out are there any people in this church right now that will say, listen, I am a preserver of the oil. I didn't, I didn't see no hands right there. I, I need to know what I'm working with tonight. I'm a preserver of the oil. Glory to God. I preserve it when I'm praying and fasting. Hallelujah. I, I preserve it when I am humbly serving the house of the Lord. Somebody shout glory to God. The Lord said as we leave this year of 2018 and go into 2019 and I'm almost done. I don't know. I don't know where you are tonight. You're here. I believe you're listening to the word of the Lord. The Lord says as we go into this year, there are some people who are wondering what's your purpose? What has God called me to do? What, what is my assignment for this year? Am I going to be promoted to that position that I've been spying out in the church? What, what is my assignment? Am I going to be promoted? Is my name going to be called more? Am I, am, I, am, I, am I going into the enemy's camp and, and taking back my stuff that he stole? And he says, no. He says, not unless you're willing to be a keeper of the oil. He sent me here tonight all the way from Texas to stand as his recruiter. And to let you know that there is a job fair that's going on in the kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God. And we're in need of some people who will keep on preaching the old time way. But the Lord told me to tell you that your preaching has got to be tied up with the oil. Glory. The only requirement for your preaching is that you've got to preach the oil. You may not know the Greek. You may not know the Arabic. You may not know how to exegete the text and make it hermeneutically correct. But if you can shout Jesus the right way, if you can preach the gospel, and when you take the microphone, the anointing of God is rushing out of you, then you're the right preacher. Look at somebody is a God he's recruiting preachers who will preach his word who won't compromise it who won't bite your tongue who won't back up from the truth but you'll preach his word you'll preach it instant in season and out of season somebody shout he's recruiting hey. he says listen tonight I'm recruiting some prayer warriors because there's a sound that must be heard out of Zion. But your prayers has got to have the oil flowing through them unless they go to the ceiling and come back down. We're in need of some singers and some musicians to play and sing Zion songs. It's not about your runs it's not about your riffs but it's about the oil flowing out of you tonight until like David you can drive every unclean spirit that's not like God somebody shout there's a recruitment going on in the kingdom we need some praisers who will exchange the spirit of heaviness and put on the but your pro 
praise can't just be about your fancy footwork. Your praise has got to have the oil so that when you praise God, his glory comes down. Open your mouth and shout. Shout under the anointing. Shout under his power. Shout under his glory. Shout under his glory. Yes. Listen, listen. The Lord said, ask you tonight. Ask, ask, ask about 50 to 60 of you. Are there any sign-ups tonight? Look how you did that. Your flesh won't let you lift your hands up. Because you know your flesh going to have to die. Can you imagine Joash going back to his family? Telling his wife, baby, I got a new job. But I, I wasn't assigned to be a, a gatekeeper. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't assigned. I wasn't assigned as a Levitical priest. And, and, and this is Joash. He, he has been on the battlefield with David. He says, but listen, the king has assigned me to move down to the cellar. I, I want to ask you one more time, are there any people in here that's willing to accept your new position? Hey, hey, before you, before you get good and signed up, let me tell you that with your position, you're going to be lying on. People going to scandalize your name. You're going to lose your friends that want notoriety. It may be lonely sometimes, but if you stay there, I said if you stay there, I said if you stay there, stand right there because there's a benefit package that's coming if you take the job. If you're a keeper of the oil, then we cannot forget all of his benefits. He forgiveth all thine iniquities. He healeth all thy diseases. He redeemeth thy life from destruction. He crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. If you take this job, he's going to satisfy your mouth with good things. Your youth will be renewed like the eagle. Somebody shall glory. So I'll take it if the Lord sends me. If the Lord tells me to go. If the Lord sends me as long as he was with me. As long as he's talking to me. As long as he's walking with me. Everything is all right. Look at somebody and say if the Lord sends me. I'm going this year. So don't, don't, don't look for me in the click. Don't look for me in the kiss up crowd. Y'all ain't talking to me. Don't, don't, don't look for me with my hands out. Waiting for a come up. Cause I'm going down so that the oil can come up in me so that when I lay my holy hands on my daughter that's sick I won't have to wait to get to church I'm keeping the oil at home hey, hey. when my daughter and my son got the devil working in them I won't have to bother the mother's board cause I'm keeping the oil I said I'm to give you 
up. Listen, listen. Listen, listen. I want to tell you this. That Joash, the keepers of the oil, they kept the lights on in the temple. Not just in the temple. All of Israel. They kept the lights on. Queen Sheba was, would not have been fascinated to visit Solomon's temple. She wouldn't have even been able to see it. He wasn't down there in obscurity. Keeping the oil. The keepers of the oil keep the lights on. The house of God. You want to know why our lights are dimming more and more? People got to put a search light out for the glory. <laughs> Stop blaming it on the preacher. You've got a responsibility. <laughs> You've got a responsibility to keep the oil. The Bible shows us, and I'm done here, the Bible shows us that there is an oil of the people. It was not bought, it was not brought by the priesthood. It was brought by the people. It was brought by the people so that the priests could minister. What contribution are you making? I ain't talking about your money. Talking about your tithe. What spiritual <laughs> contribution are you making for the advancement of the kingdom? Are your oils trimmed and burning bright so that when you get back to your neighborhood this year, they won't have to guess about who you are? My light. It's burning bright. I want you to lift up your hands. I want to do this my next few moments before I take my seat. The Lord said that he wants people who are humble. We're too arrogant. We're too boastful. <laughs> We're bragging too much on me, myself, and I. And even the anointing that's upon our lives, we brag as if we died for it. <laughs> Shandiosa, lift your hands up tonight to the Lord. He says, I want, I want you to move to the cellar. I want you to reposition yourself. I want you to get off of your high horse. I want you. It's not a demotion. It's a pivotal place. It's an important place. It's a place where I can use you for my glory. Lift up your hands tonight. If that is your cry this year, this year is not about my stuff. It's about his will. Come on, talk to me, somebody. It's not, it's not about my name. Get off of social media trying to make yourself great. It's, it's not about me. He says, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men. It's about the kingdom. It is truly about God first. Lift up, you lift them up, 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 up. Up. He says, I'm, 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 I'm making a recruitment tonight. I'm making the recruitment. Are you willing to keep the oil if that's your cry tonight just tell him one more time yes lord ah come on from your soul yes lord whatever you want me to do come on tell him tell him until your spirit lines up with your mouth tell him until your heart lines up with your mouth Come on, don't tell him because somebody is asking you. You've got to mean it. He says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Humble yourself, humble yourself. Get back 
to your prayer and fasting. Get back to reading my word. Humble yourself and get away from people who will puff you up into vanity. Come on, lift your hands up, 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 up. We surrender, we surrender to your will. We surrender, come on, tell him, I, I surrender, Lord. I surrender to that place. That place, that place. That place, that place. I don't care where I am. I don't care where you're using me as long as it's your will. I want to be there. <laughs> I want to be there. I don't want to be anywhere where God is not. I want to be there. Come on, come on, come on, just tell him. I surrender, oh, say it like you mean it, I, oh, to thee, my, you're my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Sing it like you mean it. From the top, I surrender. I, I surrender. Oh, come on, tell him for my household this year. I, Lord, I surrender. I surrender my will and my mind and my way all to thee, all to thee. You're my blessed, you're my blessed Savior. I Father, tonight I've given to your people what you gave me to give them. I pray that as we go into this 2019 year, that we would become keepers of the oil. Thank you for a fresh anointing that flows in this place. Thank you for a fresh oil that comes out of every trial, every tribulation. We're not backing up from you. We're facing the things that you would have us to do. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. It's for your glory. Come on, tell him. It's for your glory. Hey. The surrender is for your glory. Use us. Use us as clay in your hands. Shape us and mold us. And to be instruments of honor. If there's anything that's contaminated in my heart. Forgive us, Lord. We want to be used as keepers of your precious oil. In the name of Jesus Christ, throw your head back and as loud as you can, shout, I'm a keeper of God's oil. Come on, shout, I'm a keeper. I'm a keeper of his oil. Keeper of his oil. Come on, come on. You ought to be rejoicing. You ought to be rejoicing. I'm a keeper of his oil. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sing this one stanza. My storage is empty. And I'm available to you. Oh, tell him like you mean it, my and I am, and I am available to you. Oh yes, I am. Sing it for the last time, real strong. My is empty and I am available to you.
clap your hands all over this building and give the Lord praise.